Do you like little things? Do you like little cars that are like go-karts? Well, then we got an awesome little episode for you today. I'm super excited. We got the Honda Beat going home today. Scott's picking it up, but he's dropping off a new project for us, and this is a Honda Today RS, and it's a CLR. It's built by Cozy Life Racing in Japan. It's a super cool car. It's got a T37s on it. It's the first time I've gotten to see it, so I'm, I'm really stoked, and uh, we'll see it roll out. details on either one of these cars but we have been detailing a lot of Japanese K cars and I have some really cool stuff in the shop right now so I wanted to show you it and kind of tell you a little bit about it and just um, kind of give you an overview of these cool really cool ass cars because um, I've actually never had one of these in my possession before so this is a first for me and you rarely see cars like this um, so today I have a 1997 Honda Today RS uh, these cars were manufactured from 1985 all the way to 1998, and they went through a few different body changes. Um, but this car was the was Honda's re-entry into the K car, and originally this was um, more of a commercial vehicle, a, a very tiny commercial little vehicle. And as it changed, it turned into a little passenger vehicle, and it was often modified in the K car world and raced around in Japan as well. So obviously, you can see this one is modified. And uh, we're gonna go over kind of the cool details about what the Honda today is and what this car is specifically, um, along with this Honda Civic Type R replica that we have right here, which is, I believe, a 99 um, Honda Civic hatchback that has been converted to be a Civic Type R replica, along with a slew of really cool Mugen parts, along with a spoon carbon fiber hood. So this car is actually just getting, uh, pre-sale detailing done. Um, so we did a one-step polish to it. Um, we actually two-step polished the hood because it had some heavier swirls on it. Um, pulled the wheels off, did a full cleaning of that, and then went through the entire interior and steam cleaned everything and uh, conditioned it all so that it's, it's nice and uh, preserved for the next owner so that he can kind of continue the, the um, well upkeep that the previous owner has, has already kind of started. So this vehicle is from my buddy who purchased this from Japan about a year ago. It just finally came in, and this is actually really cool. It's the, the emerald green, which is kind of neat, and of course it looks great with the bronze Volk T37s. And if you remember, these are the same staggered set of Volk T37s that I just got finished polishing in the last video. So um, Obviously, there's a theme here between the Honda Beats and the Today RS and these K cars with the staggered, really small Volk T37s, but they look great. They're iconic and they're super lightweight. So, um, this car's got a bride seat for the driver's seat. We also have the driver's seat over here in a bag that I'll be steam cleaning as well. Um, but this car actually has a little bit um, higher miles in terms of the collection that this owner has. Um, he loves driving this car since he's got it. He actually has told me that he's been dying to get it back just because he wants to drive it before the snow comes. So uh, we're not going as crazy as we have on all the other cars. We will still do a wheels off detail. We'll pop the wheels off, clean the wheels, clean the wheel wells. The engine bay is really clean, um, but we're gonna go over that and condition all the rubber hoses and everything. And then also we're gonna run through the interior. Um, they did a great job cleaning up the interior before it came here, but the 
seats are kind of uh, stained and a little dirty, so we'll do a, a steam clean or an extraction on those to make sure we get all that um, dirt out. And then we'll also go over the entire outside of this car. And um, the outside of this car is a little weird just because, for one, it's a little older, um, not the best paint in the world, along with some repaint being done on this vehicle as well. And some of the repaint isn't all that great. And if you've seen cars that have come over from Japan, they kind of have a different level of standard when it comes to um, paint and finish work. So the carbon fiber hood has been refinished. Um, I've already gone ahead and polished that. Uh, it's not 100% perfect by any means, but it's the best that it's going to be and the best that I want to take it to, um, along with some dry over spray that we have to correct on the fenders, um, and the roof was resprayed as well. So um, the roof doesn't look um, like I want to sand it, so we're not going to sand it. Uh, I did do a test spot using the Optimum Hyper Wool compounding pad which did a, a great job. It actually leveled a lot of the peel and the defect and the texture and the movement in the clear coat. Again, not perfect by any means, but um, it's a night and day difference compared to uh, what we have, and we don't have to sand and risk removing more material than we probably have to work with. So um, overall, I'm just doing an outside um, two-step polish on this most likely. I'm going to try to minimize the amount of polish time into this car just because, for one, it's small, and for two, like I said, he's going to drive it more than some of the other cars that we've done. And uh, I'm just going to kind of take you around the cars and show you all the cool stuff that's on them, kind of show you the features of them, and, um, and keep this video short for now just because we're not doing anything that's amazing, kind of like some of the other 100-hour detail jobs that we've done on some of these other collector cars. So let's do it. So next is the Civic Type R replica, and this is a really cool car because this has been in the area for a really long time. It ended up at King Motorsports, and it's been in their showroom for a long time as well. And this car has an immense amount of parts on it. It makes it really, really cool. I like it just because this was a really cool car. When I was growing up, I was into the Honda scene, and this was always a chassis that I loved, and especially the 99 hatchback specifically. So this car is cool, it's silver, obviously. It's got the Type R badges with the JDM Honda emblems, along with the Honda factory rear lip and side skirts, along with the Mugen front lip, which is missing right now because it's in paint. Um, I need to get repainted because of a couple chips. Um, it has the Mugen rear wing, along with a spoon hood. Um, the interior is done up on this car too. It's got the Type R shift boot. It's got the JDM Recaro uh, front seats as well as the JDM steering wheel and a couple other bits inside. Um, I'll show you around a couple things in this car as well, and uh, it's cool. It's got the JDM B16B engine, so 1.6 liter VTEC engine that came in the Civic Type R, so it's very fitting for this. Um, I believe it's got a Mugen header, um, another, a number of uh, Mugen parts on here, like a Mugen intake and Mugen strut bars and some other cool parts, so let's check it out. So this car has a five lug conversion on it. Normally this car comes with four lugs and it does not come with all wheel disc brakes, but this is upgraded with the Integra Type R all wheel disc brake and five lug conversion, similar to what you'd find on a Civic Type R. And it's paired very nicely with a set of Mugen MF10 wheels in the bronze finish, which is definitely a a choice for a lot of Honda heads, and this is the original version. So this is the old school ones, not the uh, rerun ones that came out. So um, even more collectible, even though they look about the same. It's got the SI fog lights, along with the JDM headlights. Take it inside here. Very cool. The Mugen gauge cluster along with the JDM steering wheel and Recaro seats. It's a little dark, but JDM shift boot, type R shift knob, matching Alcantara suede with red stitching panels along with the center console.
check out the goods here. All nice and polished. So here you go, we got the original version one Mugen Reservoir covers, the Mugen socks. Uh, very cool, along with the spoon hood, like I mentioned earlier. A Mugen front strut bar with the Mugen air intake box, along with the Civic Type R engine. And obviously that comes with the Civic Type R engine valve cover and the JDM Civic Type R oil cap. It's got a Mugen exhaust manifold or header. And we'll check out the back too. I believe it's got a um, Mugen rear strut bar, but it's also got fluidine radiator, it's coil over suspension. So this car's done up really, really nice. Very, very tasteful mods and expensive ones on top of it. Custom Alcantara suede rear hatch cover with the Mugen strut bar, along with a pair of Kicker Solo Barracks and a Memphis amp. This was a build from a long time ago, and this is pretty fitting for it. It's very period correct and still top quality top quality audio for the time and still still awesome as it is now the Mugen equipped badge the JDM rear Honda badge and the Civic Type R badge along with the Mugen twin loop exhaust which was always one of my favorites I loved it just because you get the raw VTEC sound. You'd get the raw VTEC sound and not get overly droned out with the exhaust tones. So yeah, overall, really, really nice car. Built very, very well. I'm pretty sure that the motor had some internal work done to it as well, but I'm not quite sure. So, um, but this car is going to a new owner. 99 Civic Type R replica, very, very cool. Both of these cars, like I said, pretty quick details. This one's heading home tomorrow. And on to the Green Goblin. So this car went through a lot of changes throughout the years that it was made and from 85 to 1993 it was a light commercial vehicle. In 1993 it went to its second generation where it was updated to be a light passenger vehicle and that's when a lot of these cars started beginning to be modified and lo started looking a little bit different. Um, from 93 until 96 um, they continued with that same body style and then in 96 they gave it its final change where they changed the rear hatch um, from a tailgate to a traditional traditional hatchback option and also change the taillights and a few other few other things as well. So in 96 and 97 and 98, I believe, it's either two or three years, they made the Honda Today RS. So the original Honda Today had an inline three cylinder 656 cc engine and um, when they made this model, the Today RS, it came with the M-Trek motor that you're going to find in all of the Honda Beats as well. So this, because it had the multi-throttle engine response control. So that's what M-Trek stands for. Um, this engine was a little bit uh, more easily modified to get a little bit of extra power and, uh, and as you know the Honda Beats were often modified so it was a very common engine and the parts transferred over. So. This car is really neat. It's got some suspension work done to it. It's got the wheels and tires, obviously, the bride racing seat along with the JDM Honda steering wheel, and then it's got a lot of um, cool extra bits on it. So it's got a front lip and some side skirts. Um, it has the OEM mud flaps on the rear, and then this is a Cozy Lights racing uh, car. So it's a, a CLR built car, and it's got 
a lot of the Cozy Lights racing bits on it. So um, some of the titanium hood uh, props and other things. It's got uh, a JDM oil cap with the JDM red engine covers, the valve covers. And uh, it's, it's just an overall really, really cool car. It's fun to drive. It's really short, kind of like a Mini Cooper. Uh, the, the rear wheels are right by the rear bumper. Um, and with the suspension, it just it handles really, really, uh, really awesome. And it's just a different experience to drive. So the RS models were cool specifically because they had a steering wheel and a tack as well in the interior. And what's really odd about these cars is that the interiors are not actually symmetrical. So the driver's seat actually has more space than the passenger side, which makes this even a more interesting vehicle altogether. I've never actually seen anything like it, so it's pretty neat. Um, and uh, we're just going to take you around and, and show you both of these cars and kind of just show you all the cool features and, and parts that are already on them. All right, so you can see it's got the JDM wrinkle valve covers along with the JDM oil cap. This car has full coilover suspension along with this CLR strut bar and a bunch of cool other little bits like this titanium CLR hood prop. So I'm, like I said, I'm not doing anything major this car. I'm just going to do a, a regular detail essentially besides the outside paintwork. Um, most of the stuff's pretty clean, so we're just going to clean and condition everything. Um, but you can see that this is pretty neat. I got a whole bunch of stuff laying all around here because I'm trying to tend the battery and um, get some other stuff cleaned up on my car. But it's got a front lip. The Volk wheels with the Advan tires, along with a cool set of side skirts. Got the bride bucket with adjustable seat rails. JDM steering wheel. Exhaust, the rear wing. So nicely modified, clean. It's got the Apex E controller. It's definitely period correct for sure. It's um, something that was often in cars around the late '90s, early 2000s. So, so yeah, this is the uh, Honda Today RS. I've obviously started getting polish on it, it's got dust all over it. Um, I'll show you guys some of the progress that we make as we go along and clean it. Open up the back and we got the cool gathers rear speakers along with the CLR rear strut bar as well. You can see now that we're in the back here that the driver's side is so much wider than the passenger side, which is definitely pretty cool. Alright, so like I said, I'm going to use the Optimum Hyper Wool Pad on my Rupes 21. I've got the washer mod uh, with a 5 inch backing plate on it. Obviously not approved, but um, this is a tool that I like to use most of the time. Or a 15, I'm just not a fan of a five, uh, 6 inch backing plate. Um, I rarely do cars where it makes it worth the time. So I'm going to use the Optimum Hyper Wool Pad with Oberk Cut. Um, this is, I'm just using on the hood to level some of the orange peel and defects along with the roof and then I'm going to see if I can correct some of the overspray or texture on the fenders as well. The rest of the car I'm just going to polish with a Lake Country HDO orange pad on the same polisher um, along with Oberk polish. So well, let's get going and uh, try to make quick work of this. getting a lot of texture removal um, especially if we're not sanding on this so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay a tape line down um, and show you guys what's ha happening here um, and how much texture and uh, leveling removal we can do with um, wool or a hyper wool pad 
um, and just a, a regular compound versus actually sanding. Um, I'm using a Rag Company Eagle Edgeless 500 towel. Um, sometimes I like towels that are a little bit lighter, not as heavy and dense, but um, on these softer paints, seems like if you look at them wrong, they uh, mar or scratch, so I, I typically stick with a thicker plush towel um, for these types of cars, along with um, some of the Porsche and uh, Subaru sticky paint, stuff like that. So we got some masking tape here. Um, this is the masking tape that, I believe it's, it's Car Pro masking tape, sold by Sky's the Limit. I actually really like this tape. Um, it's, it's a lot more inexpensive than your traditional 3M blue tape, and I actually uh, like it. I think it sticks better in a lot of circumstances, and it's a little bit more controlled. Um, tape is tape, but um, once you find one that you like, it's nice to stick with it, whether it's price or uh, price or performance or both. So. So the wool absorbs a little bit more polish than microfiber, so I choose four dots. Um, try to increase the amount of polish a little bit just because it tends to get soaked up into the wool. Uh, now that it's primed, it should be okay. Uh, but now we're going to go ahead and give this kind of a, uh, a second section pass along with start cutting over here, and I'll show you the difference in a 50-50. But um, this is a tool that I like to use most of the time, or 15, I'm just not a fan of a uh, six inch backing plate. Um, I rarely do cars where it makes it worth the time. So I'm going to use the Optimal Hyper Wool Pad. So you can see that I'm doing is I'm, I'm kind of moving around and I'm chasing the texture, trying to uh, make it all kind of even out and match itself as I move on. I'm going to give it one more pass to kind of clean it up. And, uh, and then we'll pull our tape. Okay, so there's a couple things that I did. On the edges, I came in on an angle and kind of worked it up and down, and that's called scalloping. That's a technique that Kevin Brown's talked about in the past. Um, but I do that on the edges so that I can work up to the edge, remove that texture and the defects without constantly going over the edge. And then the other thing that you can see is I did is I adjusted my down pressure and my speed multiple times when going through the pass because um, these Honda cars um, just have really thin metal and the roofs tend to be the worst. So it kind of oil cans and, and wants to punch down if you're um, using too much pressure or even the, the weight of the polisher alone. And if you're spinning too fast, you can't put enough downward pressure, the pad tends to glide or skip over the surface rather than actually polish or cut. Um, so then I need to slow down my, my speed, concentrate my pressure and, and work a little bit slower. On some er circumstances, you kind of have to work with that oil canning a little bit just in order to get it to polish and level out. Um, but I think overall, we definitely got a, a good a good improvement over what we had, and I'll show you that right now. Didn't look too bad. A little modeling in the uh, metallic, but the clear coat is just a little rolly, uh, but it looks pretty close or uh, decent in comparison to a factory. Coat. So now, if you look at the reflection of the uh, T5 or T8 bulbs on the ceiling, getting close here. After and before, so the dead, the light gets really dead. On top of the scratches, it's just not very clear. 
So I think that's a good enough result that we need here for the roof. I think it'll make it look pretty good. No need to sand it, no need to repaint it. Um, we'll leave it the way that it is and uh, continue compounding the rest of it out. We wipe front to back and left to right. Try, try to avoid doing big circles like this so that if we see swirls or scratches in the finish, we know whether it came from our towel or if it was already there. So here we're going to use an all-purpose cleaner to pre-treat the soiled or dirty buffing pad and then I'm going to toss it into a bucket of water to let it soak until we're done with the project. That actually helps considerably to reduce the amount of dried up compound in the pad. It makes it a lot easier to clean out at the end of the day and a lot easier to get all of that residue out. So we've got the entire exterior of this car completed. I got it all polished. I got it all wiped down with uh, G-Technic C2 V3 ceramic sealant. And I realized that the windows have some water spotting that I cannot get off, similar to the CRX that we did before and similar to a lot of these other cars that we've been getting from Japan. So. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to tape off the windows and polish, and I have actually done that on this side already. Um, oddly enough, most of the contamination has been on the side windows, not really on the front or rear. Um, so at least there's two less windows that we got to polish. Um, but overall, it's kind of a tedious process regardless of how you do it. Um, because I'm not trying to get rid of any heavy scratching or anything like that, even though there are, there are some scratches in it, um, I'm actually just going to be using um, CarPro's uh, glass polish, uh, I believe it's called Seri Glass, uh, CarPro Seri Glass, and I'm going to be using it with a Lake Country microfiber cutting pad. And the reason I'm going to do it that way is because I'm actually just looking to get rid of the, the topical contaminants, the water spot etchings on the top of the glass, and uh, maybe just lighten up some of the scratches. I, I don't want to use a heavy felt pad or a rayon glass polishing pad because I really just don't want to risk putting light scratches in the windows and having to refine that down. Um, it's just such a long process and it's hard to justify charging the customer for that. So um, I'll show you what we've got going on here. I'll show you that we've got some finished glass and what it kind of looks like before. So let's check it out. All right, so here we've got the glass all polished. As you can see here, looks nice and clean. A couple light scratches here and there from the window going up and down, but overall it looks pretty good. We'll go take a look at the other side here. What you see here, we have all of this water spotting and that's pretty much exactly how the other side looked real bad streaky water spots so um, the front glass looks similar doesn't look as drastic because it's not tinted but overall really really badly water spotted I got this side taped up. I'll polish the lower side of the glass on the front windshield first or on the, the front door glass first. And then I'll roll down the window and get all along the top edge to make sure that we get it all off. And the same thing with the rear window. So I still got probably another 
two hours to go to polish this side. I would say the other side took me about two, two and a half hours. Um, so finish up that. We'll pop the wheels off, clean everything up really quick, and uh, touch up the interior and get it ready to get delivered. Well, there you got it. We have it all polished up, uh, ready to pull it outside, take a peek. Definitely not the most extensive detail that we've done compared to a lot of the other Hondas and, and different featured videos that we've um, kind of gone over some interesting and different um, kind of detailing, especially for cars uh, in the price range that they're in. Uh, but definitely wanted to show you this cool Honda Today RS um, because it is so unique and you don't really see a lot of these in the U.S. So um, enjoy and hopefully you uh, um, like the video. Please subscribe to our channel. We need your subscriptions. We, we need all the views that we can get to help us uh, stay on YouTube's feed and, and let other people see us. Please share, like, comment below, and uh, thanks for tuning in. This video and our entire channel is brought to you by one of our great sponsors, King Motorsports. If you've never heard of King Motorsports, they're the name in the Honda world. And they are known for being associated with Mugen um, and started off as a dealership back in um, this, the late 70s, early 80s. King Motorsports itself started in 1981 and has been heavily involved in SCCA racing and tons of Honda Motorsports um, activities, whether it's um, magazine articles, um, racing itself, prepping vehicles, or just show cars. Uh, their core has been in road racing vehicles in the past, um, but they have been a staple in the Honda community for decades, and they continue to be with some of the top name brands that you can buy worldwide. So if you've never checked them out, please, I, en I encourage you to go check them out. They're an awesome shop with um, the capabilities of doing Honda authorized repairs, but also selling some of the greatest parts and knowing Honda cars inside and out regarding, regardless of the chassis that you're into, regardless of the time frame of Hondas that you're into, they know it all. They know the ins and outs and they can help you with any of your projects that you've got going on. So go check them out, kingmotorsports.com.